Hall. Even money from the outside of the starting gate. Nine to five, respect to number four, Rose Run Speedster, held on for back-to-back -back winning efforts. A convincing winner against Gold Foes, July 9th at Georgian, held on for a half-length score last time out, trotting home in 28-3 for a 158-4 mark. Rookie trotters set for a start here. They're often trotting far outside. Speedy Crest is quickly trotting out for Luke Willette, looking for the lead down the center. Life well lived from the rail away third is one of the few. Going to cross over, get a seat fourth. Rose Run Speedster, then fifth inside as they head to the quarter pole is Pennant Sealster. Down the center from in sixth is Tycoon Sealster. And Jones just lost. Pennant Sealster and Moise have just lost. One of the few who blew up in the three hole. Opening quarter, compliments of the favorite Speedy Crest. It's Speedy Crest, rather the second choice. Speedy Crest on top by two of the quarter in 28 and two. Back into second is Life Well Lived. A gap of two lengths back to Rose Run Speedster from in third. Then a gap of another four lengths back inside. There's Tycoon Sealster being followed by a man for all seasons. Penn and Sealster's reset. He'll try and catch the pack in the backfield. One of the few is just resetting. Field approaching the midway point. Top spot belongs to Speedy Crest. Getting things his own way in the second quarter after using up 28 and two speed to make the front. He's got them at the half in a minute and one fifth. Second quarter was just 31 and four. They move into the final turn. Speedy Crest on point. Riding in the pocket spot. That's life well lived. First over third is Tycoon Sealster. Fourth inside to Rose Run Speedster. Advancing on cover. A man for all seasons. Also back in at Penn and Sealster as they come to three quarters with the lead at Speedy Crest. Speedy Crest is confronted now by Tycoon Sealster, who's right up alongside now. They trot stride for stride to three quarters. That post in 130 and two, a 30 and one third quarter off the turn and into the stretch. Speedy Crest is the one to catch. Drifting across the racetrack badly, that's Tycoon Sealster. He's up and about the sixth path. Life Well Lift comes on off a ground saving trip, and here comes Rose Run Speedster, buried most of the mile and coming on strong on the end. Now Rose Run Speedster up after Life Well Lift. It's Life well lived and Rose Run Speedster to the line. Rose Run Speedster reaching up to win it by a neck over Life Well Lived in 159. It's another gold level victory for Rose Run Speedster. Three wins in a row, in fact, and winning driver Anthony McDonald joining me here. Uh, let's talk about the pace first off here, eh, Mac? Because, I mean, that was a slow first half. Were you comfortable where you were? I'm never really worried when it comes to this colt where he's sitting. He's, uh, he's a really, really fast colt. And James had put him on the front the other night, and he had told me he didn't think he was as comfortable on the front end. You know, he's still very green. I'm sure he'll be fine at some point, but... You know, I wanted to play it safe. I figured if I get out and I stayed close to him that they weren't going to be able to out-trot him. And he, he raced really well right through the wire. Is this a colt that's just exceeded expectations? Well, that goes without saying. I mean, we bought him for 14000 in Harrisburg and asked the gentleman that uh, the group of people here that bought into the horse, uh, you know, you know, what we've done here with the stable is fantastic. And, and uh, I'm really proud of my wife, and, and we're both really proud of what we created. You know, we gave guys a chance to get in on a horse that otherwise wouldn't be able to and, and here they are in the in the you know the winter circle the goal that's pretty special and I'm really proud of it I know the wins are obviously very important but you know at the end of the day is that what it comes down to I mean we just saw a very very happy group of people probably most of them first time uh, horse owners 
Well, listen, if you want to help, if you want to save harness racing, we're going to need more people on the tarmac, and getting more people involved in ownership is one way, probably the best way to do it, not just for, for trainers like myself, but for racetracks like Woodbine or any other tracks throughout the world. And, you know, what we're trying to do here is the tip of the iceberg. We're trying to show people that the more horses, the more owners, the more owners, the more fans, the more fans, the better it is for everybody around. So, you know, you talk about the 10 or 12 people in a row on Speedster, the 30 people are in on five or 10 other horses. I mean, th what we're doing here is, is really, uh, as I said, something special and it's good for the industry and it certainly is great for me. And uh, can we expect to see him August 4th, Nation's Capital? Oh, absolutely. All right, another gold level win for him. Good luck with him in the future. Thanks very much. All right, Anthony McDowell, the stable.ca Rose Run Speedster gets it done in the first gold division of the night.